it in as we end the third week of this brand new program, Sports Center with Jay Onright, brought to you by McDonald's. And by mail it in, I mean we will not put in as much effort in this program as we have the previous four programs this week. But we can still tell you that the Dominique Ducharme era began in Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Mailing it in on city names. Uh, against the Jets. Now, by the way, this is the first meeting between Winnipeg and Montreal so far this season. Hard to believe. Ducharme just here, the first of four and ten making his Habs debut behind the bench. Just one regulation win in their last six, Montreal. Yoel Armia already has made it one nothing Montreal. And on a two-on-one, Jonathan drew in. Beautiful feed. Armia's got his second of the game. 2 nothing Habs. Nice start for Ducharme. Second period Jets power play. They're working it around. Carey Price makes that initial save on Blake Wheeler. Look at Kyle Connor sneak in there. Sixth power play goal allowed by Montreal in the past four games. Got to keep your eye on Kyle Connor. He is sneaky great. Hurt in the car? Call Thomas Tatar. There's yes, Barry Kakaniemi to Tatar. Tatar, a healthy scratch just over a week ago. He buries his fifth of the year on the power play. Habs up 3 1. And Tatar's feeling good. But just minutes later, some incredible passing. There's Nick Ehlers to Paul Stastny to Kyle Connor. That's his second of the game and tenth of the year. Wheeler would tie it late in the second, so it's 3-3 after 40, and in the third period, it is the former Montreal Canadian, Nate Thompson. In the slot, beats Price, first of the season, so Winnipeg erases Montreal's two-goal lead, and now they are up 4-3. Later, Montreal turnover. And this will eventually end up on the stick of Andrew Kopp. His shot stopped, but there is Pierre-Luc Dubois. His third is a jet. Winnipeg, four unanswered goals, and they're up 5-3. Frustration setting in. Corey Perry, veteran, decides to take matters into his own hands. Wants to go with Nick Ehlers. Now, you have to give Nick Ehlers a tremendous amount of credit here. Giving up weight, giving up height, giving up grit. But man, Nick Ehlers is a gamer. He's in there, he's fighting, he's a great player, good for him. And yeah, the Jets obviously appreciate that. As they spoil Dominique Ducharme's Montreal Canadiens head coaching debut. I think I saw the guys playing better in the first half of the game. And then we crack. So we got to be playing the same way. Um, that we started. We want our guys to be uh, playing their best and uh, find solution for for every one of them, uh, from the forwards to the Ds to the goalies. So we'll uh, find a solution. We have some changes to make that we'll we'll address here coming up. So you know, it's uh, it's a work in progress. When we play the right way, it's it's fun to watch and it's it's fun to be a part of. And I think this is you know, one of the best groups we had in a while, and it's it's pretty exciting on this team. We know we're good. Yeah, he is good. I mean, they are a great team, the Winnipeg Jets, and Connor, he deserves more recognition. There's no question about it, but Carey Price has indeed been struggling this season for the Montreal Canadiens, giving up five goals four times. In fact, in just the last three games alone, he has given up five, four, and then once again, five. He surrendered five plus goals in NHL worst 11 times since the beginning of the 2019-2020 season. Always good to chat with Ray Ferraro. Flems and Sons. That's the Flems and Sons. David Riddick, 90 seconds away from back-to-back -back shutouts against Toronto on Wednesday. Gave up two goals in under three minutes and Calgary lost that one. First period of this one, Riddick, of course, Jake Markstrom out. And Riddick is beaten here by Drake Batherson. Batherson goals in four straight games. It's one nothing for the Sens later in the period. Eric Goodbranson, just a nice little Joe Sackick wrister. Flames netminder giving up two goals. So four goals in the last nine shots he faced after making 71 straight saves. Sends up by two after a frame. That was confusing to me. 
Uh, now 2 1 in the second. Calgary in their own zone. Milan Lucic is pass picked up by Connor Brown. Ottawa's trying to win three straight for the first time this year. Sends are back up by two, and we're still in that second period. Still a 3 1 game. Eric Brandstrom. Remember, he scored his first NHL goal in the last game the Sens played. He's got a second of his career right there, and that one is rough. Riddick giving up four goals on 20 shots, so that's it. Here comes backup tender Archam Zagadulin. Oh, Zagadul. 25 years old, undrafted Russian. Let's see how Riddick's feeling after. Uh, how you doing, buddy? Everything okay? You're all right? Uh, no? Okay. Never mind. We'll move on. Well, here we go. Matthew and Brady Kachuk. What would ensue? Uh, nothing. Uh, Matthew got Thomas Shabbat's stick caught under his arm, and that was pretty much it. Uh, Matthew came in with four points in his last three. That's pretty much all we'll see of the Kachuk brothers. They were both held off the score sheet. Let's get back to the Zagadool. Little Zagadool. It's Zagadool making his first career NHL appearance in relief of Riddick, Nick Paul, Colin White. Zagadool. Okay. 5-1, uh, and then it's Shabbat to White for a second. Zagadulin allowing two goals and 11 shots in his NHL debut. The Sens win their fifth game over their last seven. Shabbat already seems like a veteran. Small sample size, but it's two totally different seasons for Big Save Dave. Uh, four of Calgary's next five games, by the way, are against the Ottawa Senators, including their next one, which will be on Saturday. Oilers and Canucks. Vancouver wrapping up a brutal February. They've dropped 10 of 12, including blowing a 3-0 first period lead in Tuesday's loss to Edmonton. Again with the reverse retros. Connor McDavid can't beat Thatcher Demko there in the first later. Leon Dreisaitl. Wide open cage, Demko! Wow! Uh, McDavid logged more than 10 and a half minutes of ice time in the opening frame. Ryan Nugent Hopkins nearly hit 10 minutes as well. Dry Seidel played more than eight minutes. It's scoreless after one second period. Edmonton power play. The Nuge to Alex Chase on. Spins, fire, scores. Fourth of the year. Edmonton nine and two when they scored the opening goal this season. They're up one nothing. Mid frame, Jake Vertan inside of the net. Mike Smith with the uh, base save. And look at that, puck was not entirely across the goal line, still a 1-0 game after two. And that's where we stand, 1-0, we're in the third period, uh, less than half the period to go. Edmonton has won 10 of 12. The Canucks have just two wins in their last 12. Edmonton's also won two of three meetings this season between these two teams. Uh, Mike Smith looking for the shutout. It would be his second over his first seven games of the season. Uh, next three Edmonton Oilers games are against the Toronto Maple Leafs. That starts Saturday. The next two Canucks games are against the Winnipeg Jets, and that starts Monday as we check out the standings in the Gord Downey Memorial Division as Edmonton, with the victory, would be within four points of the leading Toronto Maple Leafs. Jets now three points up at the Habs with their win Thursday. The Habs in the last playoff spot, two up on Calgary. Um, the Calgary, we should mention that Montreal Canadiens do have two games in hand. You're watching SportsCenter with Jay Online, brought to you by McDonald's, pens and caps. Mark Jankowski absolutely crushed by Tom Wilson. Look at this. Wow. Wilson given a two-minute interference penalty. Mike Johnson, your thoughts? This is a bad hit by Tom Wilson. Even though Jankowski picked that puck out of the air and the hit wasn't high or wasn't an elbow, it was late. And if it's late, you cannot hit players that don't have the puck, especially if they cause an injury. With Tom Wilson's history, he's going to be getting a phone call. Yeah, Malkin and Wilson having some words from the box. Jankowski went to the dressing room. He did return for the second. Then in the third period. Yeah, this is incredible stuff from TJ Oshie. First even strength goal of the season, and it is a beauty beating Tristan Jerry. Just over seven to go. Tied it to Washington power play. Chris Latang 
without a stick in front. It is Wilson with what would be the eventual game winner. Second win in six games against the Pens this season for the Caps. Jack Eichel and Jeff Skinner have so far combined for two goals in 16 games this season, and neither were in the lineup Thursday against the Devils. Eichel held out due to a lower body injury, and Skinner, who's making $10 million this season, was a healthy scratch for the third straight game. What's it going to take to get Jeff Skinner out of your doghouse, and at what point might it become detrimental to this team? Well, number one, I don't have a doghouse. I, I don't know really what that is. The way the 12 forwards have fallen together in the last two games, uh, it, it's, it's been for what we feel is best for the group on this given day. Buffalo, as I mentioned, without Jack Eichel. Now, Eichel took warm-up, but it was a late scratch. So the Sabres without their two highest-paid players. First period, Nico Kiescher, who is the new captain of the New Jersey Devils. Uh, Linus Allmark. Red light went on, never crossed the line because it was a gorgeous glove save, but Allmark shaken up. He finished the period but did not return for the second. Second period, one nothing Buffalo. Jesper Bratt, Stockholm. Speedy, diminutive, beating Carter Hutton. First of the season, we're tied. Under five to go in the third. It's a 3-2 Jersey lead. Buffalo, did you know they have the second-ranked power play in the National Hockey League? Sam Reinhart with the redirect on the Taylor Hall pass. So we're tied. We're off to OT. And in that extra frame, it is again Bratt leaving it for Pavel Zaka, who wins it for Jersey and snaps a three game losing streak for the Devils. And this is clearly. Bruins, Islanders, Matt Barzell, no points in four after registering at least a point in his previous nine. Tied at one of the first. Barzell and Jordan Everly, the two on one. Barzell's gonna snipe it past Yarrow Halak. His last goal came against the Bruins just under two weeks ago. Two on New York after a period. Second period, watch Charlie McAvoy collecting the puck and oh, Anders Lee. A big number 27 for the New York Islanders. Should be retired. Should be John Tonelli's number in the rafters, but I digress. McAvoy would be okay. Back to Halak. 4-1-1. One one. A 1.66 goals against. Playing real well this season. Third period now, 3-2 Isles. Again, Barzell and Eberle with the two-on-one. This time, Barzell dishes. Eberle, sweet move. Did not invite me to his wedding. But I can't deny he is a great goal scorer. Eighth of the season, Barcel's second point of the game. Then with Boston on a power play, JG Pajot. Look at this guy, breakaway speed. Five two aisles. They'd add a couple more. Halak gives up seven. Three games against New York wins big time. And the Islanders have all right to discuss some burning topics from the National Hockey League. Always great to talk to our TSN hockey insider Darren Dreger. Dregs, the Calgary Flames take three points in Toronto, then they fall apart in Ottawa on Thursday. What do you think is holding Calgary back from making a move in the standings? And second part to that question, will changes have to be made? Well, if we start with the latter part of that question, I don't see how they can. I don't see how Brad Treliving uh, steps in as general manager. I mean, there's been so much speculation around Sam Bennett as an example. You know, and there's interest in Sam Bennett when your team is reeling in the fashion that the Calgary Flames have in their last four or five games. Uh, at some point, somebody's going to have to step in and try and fix it. Now, what muddies the waters, Jay, is pretty obvious, right? You know, they get absolutely swatted by the Edmonton Oilers, and then they come into Toronto. They beat the Toronto Maple Leafs on Monday and squeeze out a point in overtime midweek. So what Calgary Flames team is Brad Trilliving exactly supposed to fix? The one that took it on the chin to the Edmonton Oilers or the one that beat the Toronto Maple Leafs at the time, the best team in the league. But what we know is that Trilliving has the assets, but it'll be up to him to figure out whether or not the time is right or whether he continues to be patient. So far, he's been very patient. Uh, Dregs, we cannot let you leave without another edition of the greatest segment in television history. <laughs> All of your animal dreams unfurled. We're talking Darren Drager Safari World. That is a boo. And a boo 
is a beautiful leopard gecko that wants no part of me right now. Come on, Obu. Come on, smile for Jay. Smile for Jay. Big smile for Jay. <laughs> Didn't smile. Kind of like my kids, storing my life, Dregs. So, Dregs, what can you yeah. tell us about the newest member of the Dregger household? Well, we, he was visiting, to be fair, and I, I say he, I don't know, it could be a she, I, I don't know, I don't know much about Abu. Uh, I think Abu is blind, I'm told that he's an older uh, uh, gecko, um, he's property of my daughter Katie's boyfriend, Matt, so uh, he was just here for a short period of time, but a fascinating creature, I just, they don't know how old Abu is, you know, he's a rescue gecko. Wow. We don't know how old he is, so I'm very curious about this guy, but he's fun to play with. And is he, uh, where, where did the name come from? Any idea about that? It's a fascinating name. I, 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 I really don't. See, now you're, you're asking things that I cannot answer. <laughs> I mean, I've had some bizarre things in the safari world, right? But yep. most of them are, you know, within proximity of the household. Sure. So when this guy was brought in in the travel crate, uh, I was just mesmerized by it. I loved it. I'm not going to get one. Right. Yeah, I'm not going to get one, but I didn't dig too deep. But I'll have that answer the next time you have me on the show. Okay, that is a perfect tease. Dregs, thank you so much, my friend. <laughs> Welcome back to the Jay Onright Show, brought to you by McDonald's. What a matchup on Thursday night. Zion against Giannis. Top two scores in the paint, top 10 in dunks this season. From Lonzo Ball, Zion gets it started. He'll be attending his first All-Star game in just a couple of weeks. Onto the Kupo guarding Zion. Zion just blows right by him, gets it to go off glass. Okay, we see you, youngster. Second quarter, Eric Bledsoe. Bledsoe for three. No, not gonna happen. Tipped in by Zion over Giannis. Zion had a career high 24 in the first half. There's Giannis taking a lot from Dante DiVincenzo in the third, then in the third quarter as well. Onto the Kumpo. Scores on Josh Hart, then grabs his lower back. Needed some time on the bench, would check back into the game. Got some real backs to set, perhaps. Crucial play. Over a minute left, one point game. Zion collides with Brooke Lopez, wanted a foul. Giannis. Picks it up, takes it the length of the floor, and scores two of his 38. First Bucks player with 35 plus in three straight games since Kareem Abdul Jabbar in 1973. Zion had 34, and they're switching the jerseys. That was cool. That was fun to watch. Uh, Magic and Nets, New York allowing 10% capacity in arenas this week, and Brooklyn is offering a living room suite for fans to watch games. Because that looked like a living room. Early Second period, offense. James Harden, the crossover, gets it to go. The to Harden averaging just over 31 Durant. points a game during Durant. Kevin Durant's recent absence from the team. And then vintage Harden, just a little step back three. 17 of his 20 points came in the second half. Let's flash back to Sunday, or in the first half, rather. Kyrie Irving on a break. First dunk of the season. First dunk of the season. Doesn't dunk much. Back to Thursday. What's Kyrie doing here? Beautiful steal. All right, so he's going to go. On. The bench is going crazy for it. And they're like, no. Just dropped it in. Why? Look how excited everyone was. He had 27. This is what he knows. Brooklyn Nets. They won eight straight. They're a half game back of the Sixers for tops in the Eastern Conference. Sixers also won on Thursday. Wizards Nuggets. Nikola Jokic awarded the Western Conference Player of the Month Award for December and January. First quarter, Jokic and Jamal Murray. Like Stockton and Malone on the pick and roll here. Jokic gets it to go. Mo Wagner cannot stop him. Three-time All-Star, poured in 24 and 11 boards. Murray can't get to the paint, gets the rebound. And then feeds Jokic, who gets a little baby hook to go. That's nice, right? Murray, Canadian, had 34, and that was one of his six assists. Dying seconds of the game. Dying seconds. Like 11 seconds. Washington up two. Off the Washington miss. 
Here come the Nuggets. Murray passes to Facundo Campazzo. And he can't make it. The Nuggets lose a close one. Okay. Um, coming up after the break. Our friend Mike Garofolo is going to drop by. I don't know if you heard, but Russell Wilson was making some news on Thursday, or should I say, Russell Wilson's camp. What does that even mean? Who Delivered is brought to you by McDelivery. Sam Gagne had a hat trick. He scored three goals. He snapped a 17-game goalless drop that lasted for almost a year. Detroit beat Nashville. Gagne hadn't scored since February of 2020. That's his first hat trick since February of 2012 when he had an eight-point game for Edmonton against Chicago. Sam Gagne. Yeah. Still in the lead. Getting hat tricks. Seattle Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson has not demanded a trade from the team as agent Mark Rogers told Adam Schefter Thursday. The 32-year-old wants to play in Seattle, but if the Seahawks were to consider trading him, he would choose to be dealt to either the Cowboys, the Saints, the Raiders, or the Bears. He gave the Seahawks a list. Should mention Wilson has a no-trade clause that he would have to waive in order to be traded. All right, so with that Russell Wilson news, we welcome in the NFL Network's Mike Garofolo, who joins us every week. Mike, uh, Russell Wilson's agent says he doesn't want to be traded, but just in case, Mike, he submitted four <laughs> teams he'd be willing to be traded to. Bizarre situation uh, that seemed to kind of come out of nowhere. What is going on? Very disingenuous, frankly, from Russell Wilson's agent to uh, be pushing this thing. I mean, listen, we know where it's coming from. It's coming from Russell Wilson and his camp. That's what started this whole thing. I would say that 90% of the stuff out there has come from his side. And then to be like, well, we're not asking for a trade, but if the Seahawks would like to trade him here, are the, I mean, come on, we know what's going on here. Um, and, and I've been saying for a, a bit now that Russell Wilson is not going to be the quarterback of the Seahawks at the end of his current contract, which has three years left. And I would say probably before the end of that contract. Now, the question is, are we talking about this year? Does he take a snap under center in 2021 with the Seahawks? I think so. I think he's still their quarterback this upcoming season. Uh, from what I'm being told, they are not engaging in trade talks, though they are upset with what Russell Wilson is doing right now. Um, so, Russ, if you're out there and you're watching, and of course you're watching, everybody does, um, it, you're going to have a difficult situation in that locker room because guys are upset, particularly the offensive line. The guys that are protecting you and then you're buying extra time, you're getting hit, and you're saying, well, I'm getting hit because of the offensive line. They're not happy. Other teammates aren't happy. I still think that this team's going to win games this year because they seem to thrive on uncomfortable situations. But this is going to be an uncomfortable situation for sure. And Jamal Adams has got to be in his ear saying, dude, the Jets, I got out of there. I came here. Come on. Uh, anyway, uh, Deshaun Watson, you talked about him a lot on this program the last couple of weeks. Reportedly met with new Texans head coach David Culley last Friday. Supposedly, Watson says he still doesn't want to play for that franchise again. And when we last talked, you said the Texans didn't want to trade him. But has Houston wavered on that stance after that meeting with Cully? No, not at all. And that was a phone conversation with Cully. Now, I think that's an important distinction because, you know, getting somebody, seeing them face to face, having conversations, perhaps you start to sway them and say, hey, we're going to do things a certain way here that are not like they were in the past. Now, we know Deshaun Watson's issues go very high in that organization, about as high as you can get up to Cal McNair and Jack Easterby, the uh, pastor who McNair has brought in uh, to help with the, the culture there. And he hasn't helped. He's hurt the culture there. Um, so Deshaun Watson's issues are not going to be resolved, I don't think, until maybe something changes with Easterby's status with the organization. So um, he's going to continue to put pressure on the team. Uh, they are going to continue and have continued to say we are not even engaging in trade talks. We are going to have Deshaun Watson back. We'll see where this goes. If he continues to put pressure on the team, you wonder if at some point they go, ah, enough is enough. They're not there right now, though, I can tell you that. And to finish the quarterback news this week, news broke Ben Roethlisberger back with the Steelers next season, Mike. But will this be the final season for Big Ben in Steeltown? Oh, there's no question about that. Um, and, and that's the, the vibe that 
I'm getting from both sides. The both sides seem to understand that. And there's going to be some massaging of the contract. And uh, Ben's going to give it one more shot. But they changed offensive coordinators to Matt Canada, uh, who runs a style of offense that ideally, if he would run it the way that he wants to run it, is not really predicated to Ben Roethlisberger's strengths. But they're going to try to work together as best they can to give it one more shot, try to retain as many free agents as they can. I know Ben Roethlisberger wants Juju Smith-Schuster back, uh, as well as uh, – some other guys, if they can retain, perhaps Bud Dupree, their pass rusher. So we'll see if the Steelers can muster a, a Super Bowl run here. But uh, regardless, I think it's another quarterback for them in 2022. Uh, Matt Canada, by the way, surprisingly, not from Canada. Uh, Mike Garofolo, yeah, he great. is from New Jersey. <laughs> Much like my bacon that I had this morning. Canadian bacon, <laughs> not from Canada. We don't even understand that term, Canadian bacon. It's weird. Scotty's draw 17 win, and you are into the championship pool. Northwest Territories, Kelly Galusha facing Beth Peterson's wild card team. Tenth end territories up by one. Galusha facing a couple. Get off now. Trying for the quiet tap. Crashes into their own, but because the redstone taps the other yellow away, it's only a steal of one. They need an extra end. Skip stones. Peterson's first without hammer. And this is a beautiful draw for shock stone. Galusha, who has never made it to the championship pool. Peterson needs a big chunk back. of the button for the Bounder victory. Fleming, Barber, Rizzo. Have you got go, it, go, ladies? Go, have you go, got go, it? Go, go, go. Have you got go. it? And no, you do not. <laughs> what a call again, Vic Router. Peterson and a rookie Scottish team steal the victory. 9 8 the four, final. But... Draw 18, PEI, skipped by Suzanne Burt. They need a win to force a tiebreaker facing BC, skipped by Curran Brown. And sixth end. PEI down 4-3, but facing four BC stones. You need a chunk of the button for the single. Doesn't get in close enough. That's a steal of a couple. BC up 6-3. Ninth then BC up 6-5. Chance to put it away. Got to knock that yellow out for a multiple point end, and Brown makes no mistake. BC, three in the end. They take it, and that would eliminate PEI. 9-5 would be your final. So here's how things stand as we head into the championship pool, which begins Friday. Team Canada, Team Ontario have both booked their spots in the championship pool, and Kerry Anderson of Gimli, what a terrific place that is to visit, where the Vikings live. Looking to become the first repeat champ since Rachel Homan in 2014. Homan's rink looking for their fourth Scotty's title. John Morant continues to show off in a segment with another new name. We'll tell you what that name is right after the break on the Jay On Right Television Show brought to you by McDonald's. Stars and Panthers. Plays it over to the wing. Second period, no score for Joe Pavelski, the veteran. Sneaking in there and beating Sergey. Stars up 2 0 after two. And it was still 2 0 with six and a half minutes to go. And over to Huberto. Huberto Alexander Barkov. They call him Sasha. He's from Finland. His eighth cuts the lead to 2 1. Less than a minute later, Mason Marchment to Anton Strawman. And now we're tied. After Florida scores two goals, 52 seconds apart. But you know what? I'm going to tell you something, folks. This game's not over. Frankie Petrano. Panthers, three goals in the final seven minutes. They are 6 and 0 oh following a loss this season, 13 4 and 2. Okay. Time for another viewer suggestion for a new name for the Jannies. And in keeping with our mail it in theme, we tried to look for a suggestion that we thought mailed it in the most. And I think it's obviously on rights highlights. Thank you, Nick C, for barely trying on this suggestion. We certainly appreciate that. So it's time for on rights highlights. Not the best plays, not the worst plays, somewhere in the middle. Anthony Beauvillier stealing the puck right off Trent Frederick's stick. The sweep of the backhand past Yaroslav Halak. Isles scored seven goals in this one over the Boston Bruins. Magic and Nets. Al Farouk Aminu. Corrals lose ball. 
Looks up court. The dish to Dwayne Canadian Bacon. Hits Bacon on the head, allowing us to use our popular sports center with Jay on right catchphrase. That's using your head. Hurricanes, Molts, Molts, Curtis McElhinney. Uh, playing, I believe, just his third game of the season. And that is a nice stop there. You can hear Dave Randorf, the former TSN star, is now the play-by-play -play voice of the Tampa Bay Lightning on Fox Sports Tampa. I was talking about Jesper Bratt earlier. This is his first of the season. He's a Swedish player. He's a dirty He's fast. He cuts to the middle and lets He's small but fast. Beating Carter Hutton there. Back to Hurricanes and Bolts. And he is Andre Palat. Wrap around. Tries to sneak it past James Reimer, but Reimer denies him. There we go, Palat. He tried to bank it in off the skate of Brett Pesci. Reimer, nice stop right there. Go back and check out uh, Chicago and Columbus. Malcolm Subban, big save against Seth Jones. Uh, Zach Wierenski, a feed to Jones in the circle, but uh, Malcolm Subban there to stop him. And we're gonna finish with the Clippers and Grizzlies. Grayson Allen, who looks like Ted Cruz, to Ja Morant. Again, Grayson Allen looks like Ted Cruz. There's no unseeing it. It's a fact. Okay, guys, we have had a great show. We've had a great week, but it's almost come to an end. When we return, not only do we have the highlight of the night and worst play of the day, we have the return of Bloop Bloops. It's the worst play of the day. We're going back to Ottawa. Eric Randstrom, who just scored his first NHL goal on Wednesday, I believe. Or was it Tuesday? He scores his second here on Thursday outside of the offensive zone, beating David Riddick. Riddick pulled in that game. Not a great game for the Calgary Flames. Eller on an interchange. And TJ Oshie for the highlight of the night. The One of the He's goals of the year. Dangles by the defender, pokes it home past Christian Jerry. Tristan Jerry. Yeah, goal of the year candidate. For sure. Uh, the boys are hitting. Uh, Brandstrom was on Tuesday, so I messed that up. I messed up some other things. Off the top of the show, I struggled to say Winnipeg, which is pretty embarrassing because I used to live there. And uh, I also struggled to say flames. Basically, I struggled to say things, which is a, a problem if you're a television broadcaster on this particular program. Okay, so for the first two weeks of the show, uh, we were just getting our feet wet trying to figure things out. Uh, but throughout this week, we had a lot of fun, so we thought we'd throw together some of the behind the scenes, fun things that we did wrong. You know it is bloop bloops, enjoy. Okay, I'll phone you back. Just give me a second. I'm just with Jay. Yeah. Okay, okay, bye. Okay, we're good. Quiet on the set, please. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. I, I... Hey, Lisa, are you there? Will he score more goals this year? than the age you are turning on Tuesday, which is 46, exactly my age. We're the same age, Jeff O'Neill. Will he score more than 46 goals this year? I hate to inform you of this, Jay, but I'm turning 45. I'm sorry, Dave? Yeah. You getting my, my age wrong will be on a little segment I like to call, yeah, blew it. I wonder where you got that one from. <laughs> cool. I don't awesome. know what I'm supposed to do at the end. Do I smile or do I say something?